And we are back, round two, back nine of the 2020 Resistance Discs Open. I'm Scott Withers, here with tournament director Jeff Corns. Jeff, how are we doing? I'm doing good. I'm ready to see some more action on the back nine here for our final nine holes at Camp Serene. Yeah, this is our final B tier of the year here in Oregon. It's been a crazy COVID year where a lot of us didn't really get to get out of the state. So some extra incentive to try to sneak this one out. Jared, 15 under. I'm at 14. Cole is at 12. And Chandler is, I would say, real quietly at 11, but definitely still in this thing. Yeah, pretty tight scoring at the top. We're moving into that stretch of birdieable holes where we're short but technical. Hole number 10 is a shorter downhill hole down at the river. Most players will be probably throwing a forehand of some kind here. What are you lining up? Let me see what color it is. It's green. That's my Firebird. Remember, uh, if I threw Firebird or Invictus, but I did go Firebird, and it's not a full throw. Not even close to a full throw. You're just trying to like chop it off as far right as you can while still avoiding the trees, and that's how you get a putt out of it. Chandler, going back to the extreme, I think. Yeah, he went force round one, and he had the line down. I think he just said, I just need to slow the disc down and went to a slow fairway driver. That looks like a better angle off the hand for Cole. He stepped right in front of the screen, so I can't really tell where it went, if it hit the tree or not. But I kind of like that extreme hyzer off the hand on this one to get it moving right immediately. Yeah, you borderline almost want to saw this one off. Jared's going with that tight hyzer as well. I don't hear anything, so... Yeah, I think he's good. We watched Andrew Nava in the first round go inside of the last tree that you have to be and end up literally right next to the basket. Chandler figured that he's been in the creek once already on this casual water. He might as well do it again. Uh, okay, Jared, a little short, but he's not scared of this putt. Yeah, probably got caught up in these guardians here. and Oh, my God. oh <laughs> it just doesn't get the skip off the cage and in. Down goes Jared. Down goes the hat. Out come some words. And he's going to take a par. Yeah, he was probably hoping to bounce back from his bogey on hole nine to finish the front. and You're going, staying on the hot pace, picking up another birdie. Yeah, I'm pointing to who's next, but uh, that putt felt good. Knock it down from 25. Pick up a hole I didn't get last round. Chandler's going across the creek again. It's so muddy, it's hard to get your disc out of here, but... Uh, good par cleanup, Cole. This yeah. is his drive, I believe, and that off the, you know, or off the tee straight hyzer out of his hand really did work out for him. He's gonna putt here eventually. I promise. Got to make sure the hands dry. We saw Andrew Novo maybe struggling with some grip on the putting green. Cole's trying to make sure his hands ready to go. Yeah, it's, it's oh, oh, I I will say taking that much time over a putt that short is not ever going to help you. I don't think so. I feel like you should just get up there and put it in the basket. Don't want to second guess yourself. No, it just seems like a good way to talk yourself out of making, a, honestly, like a 10 foot putt. But it goes in extreme high right side but the Pro 28 does its job and throws it right down into the can. So we're going to move on to, I believe, what I feel is the hardest hole in the world. This hole is tricky for me as well. There's, you know, we have this theme of there's kind of one tree in the fairway to miss, and I like to throw the kind of the backhand shot with something overstable, kind of flex it in there just to get it around the corner left at the end, and I love to just square up the tree that's dead center in the fairway. I would love to square up the tree that's dead center of the fairway, I think, because that would mean I got close to the gap. That one's a little inside. I'm talking to it. That was so much closer than the first round, probably 40 feet closer to the gap than the first round, but it's going to result in the same score. Cole's ripping zone. He's taking a little bit of an outside line, hoping to sneak it up there. Good shot. Yeah, around the corner. Chandler also going zone. That's a little more the angle I like to see on a zone or a gator type shot. Chandler really ripped over on that one to get it to go straight long enough. And is Jared going to trifecta? Yep. Going zone as well. 
Can we get three guys with a zone inside the circle looking at birdies? Jared is for sure. We'll see where the other two when we get up there. That was a great shot. And I kicked from the left side of the fairway over to the right side of the fairway. And I believe I would have aced the short setting as I was right next to it, but it's not in the short setting. It is in the long left setting. So I will take my par, move on. Cole from about 28 feet here. Solid into the right side, picking up the birdie. Jared right next to him. So two zone shots go right next to each other. And Chandler hasn't putt it yet, which means we did successfully have three zones get inside the circle. Let's go. Nice dead center hit from Jared. There can't be more opposites in terms of putting than Cole and Jared. Cole pushes it, takes his time. And Jared takes three seconds on every putt. And no matter where he is, just gets up and throws it in. Oh, Chandler, just a little too right. Yeah, that's an unfortunate miss, but definitely a missed putt where he had the push out that was a basket's fault earlier. That one was a little wide. Hopefully no serene putt from you over here. Looks not obstructed. Nah, we're good. It was close enough, but... Not necessarily a hole that you have to birdie, but one at 250 feet. It's a little uphill, but you would like to birdie, and that gives Jared a one-shot lead back, although this thing's so far from over with how many holes we have left. And then we know that we're going to Dexter for the third round. So you think Camp Serene's wooded. There's some sections of Dexter that make Camp Serene look like it's got gigantic gaps. Yeah, Dexter's going to definitely bring some new shots into play. We're also going to be able to finally get the live scoring going out of Dexter since we'll have cell service. So you'll kind of be able to see where everyone else is at during the round. We played a Sal's event last weekend, and I had to keep score on paper scorecards, and we were all talking about the last time anyone had to do that, and we had to here at Resistance just because there's no there's no cell service out at Serene. Um, but we move on to hole 12. This is the extremely downhill, extremely far left with only one route to get there. Um, we're going either mid or putter here. I'm trying to throw, well, I don't know if you consider that trying to throw anything. I let the chariot out of my hand and it went forward for a little bit and then kicked right, but that was terrible. Yeah, even though this hole is very left turning, you still want to play the glide on the disc Something very overstable could dump out too early. And Chandler is kind of a no man's land in the middle of the fairway. Chandler hit the gap and then hit a tree. I'm going to be pretty close to him, actually. I did not hit the gap and then hit a tree and kick directly right. He just left himself a lot more than you want, though. You're relying on your trusty, trusty gator here. Giving it a bit of a some height to potentially go in. Yeah, so important on these wooded courses to have the ability to take an overstable uh, mid-range slash putter, whatever you want to consider a gator, or like a zone that these guys are all throwing, and throw it for him because you can look at your target the whole way and you're essentially just playing catch with whatever on the ground you want to throw it into. Chandler's looking to save his par here after a Mistake on the approach. He's a little bit right side again on the basket. Yeah, you saw him reset, which is not like Chandler, and you almost wonder if the putting is a little bit in his head at this point. Jared never resets and is trying to determine, I don't know who's out, or uh, he's definitely doing some talking in a fun way going up to the basket, but really good putt there. I'll pick up the gator and tap it in, and we're going to move on with... A whole bunch of pars on this hole? Oh, a bogey for one, Chandler. One bogey, one birdie, yeah. so averaging the par. Yeah, that's kind of crazy for Jared's drive to get as far back there as it did. Yeah, that's pretty, you know, it's really stretching that backside area. Got some good carry, I guess, as we move on to hole number 13. Hole well, 13's fun. It's a really cool, really cool little hole. Yeah, it's got some technicality. It's pretty easy to crush this one long. You kind of have this. It feels like some of the prior holes, but it's definitely significantly shorter. Um, 
you have this pretty tight gap, the river running down the middle of the fairway. Jared's going Raptor, I believe, here. Yeah, that looked good. I am going to make a correction from the first round and throw Gator instead of Firebird. Um, we'll see if Colin knew what. I assume this is a zone. Yeah, it's a Brian Earhart Tour Series zone from Cole. Okay. It makes sense. It's the right disc for this hole. Yeah, I like to go zone on this hole. Just try to poke it down that gap, and it kind of just starts fading right at the right spot. And this is my cheater disc, the gator that I can throw on any angle at all, and it's going to do the same thing. Uh, it's the right speed for this at 220 feet. So once the adjustment was made, I knew I had a better chance to birdie with that thing. Chandler going with the only disc as stable as my gator that anyone's carrying, and that's at Z Extreme. Looked pretty good, maybe a little right. A little long right by the looks of it. Like I said, it's really easy to fly one by, and you're coming back putting onto a mound here, and... That's a great birdie conversion from Chandler from outside the circle. Yeah, good bounce back after missing a couple putts in the last two holes, but he's a great putter. He took second, probably should have been first, in the Disc Golf Pro Tour virtual putting challenge that we did at the start of the year, so you know the guy can put the disc in the basket. Yeah, these disc catchers out here might be catching a little bit better than the Chainstar Light. He was slamming the putts in in the virtual putting invitational. Cole's taking his time again, making sure he's converting these tester putts. And converts that one. Again, short putt takes quite a bit of time to get ready for it, but that one looked like a more confident stroke when he did decide to throw it. There just comes in and pops it in for birdie. Right, no time. No time from... Jared and I take a little more time than Jared, but I'm also not going to stand over this putt for a tremendously long time here. So some good twos from that. That's that's the first star frame of the of the round two from the lead card here. I messed a couple up on the front, but that's a good one for us to all pick up. Uh, 18 under for Jared, 16 for myself, 15 for Cole, and 11 for Chandler. We're going to take a quick break and kick it over to a sponsor. This video is brought to you by Resistance Discs. Head over to resistancediscs.com and use code CHSPORTS at checkout to get free shipping on any order over $25. Thank you to resistancediscs.com, and let's get back to the video. If you guys haven't, definitely get over to resistancediscs.com and check out everything that Jeff has in stock. Uh, he gets very, very sweet stuff from Discraft. So anytime that you need Tour Series stuff or other Swirly Star, or I guess Swirly ESP discs, he's got a bunch of them in stock. So definitely check that out. We move into the par 3.3, I'm going to call it, because it's closer <laughs> to a 3 than a 4. Uh, 350 feet. There's two lines to take. You can go the left gap like Jared tried to, or you can play the very conservative play and go through the right gap like Cole did. Uh, I would say 80% of the pro field is going for this left gap, trying to throw a straight shot and then just get a little lucky. Nothing off the tree from there. Something to be pretty stoked about. I love that out of my hand. I thought it was right next to the basket. And as you get down towards the green, there's a few just random trees. And I caught one of them to not have a putt. Chandler didn't catch any of them. Was basically on the same line, but he threw a driver that faded out where I threw a mid-range. And he, if he's not past the basket, he's absolutely parked. This is one of the only ones where I'm a little sad that we lost the B-cam footage. Because when you guys see where Chandler is, from my angle, I had this lined up perfectly to catch Chandler's ace. This was so close to going in. The fairway driver can get it all the way to the pin, and he executed it as well as it could be done. Jared got knocked down twice and is going to end up tapping in for par, which on this hole does feel like a bogey. Cole looking to clean up his birdie par hybrid. 
It's a birdie, birdie on the scorecard, to... I guess. Well, we're counting over under par. It was labeled as a four, and I think it does play that way for some other divisions because of how tight it is. And the idea is for everyone to take the route that Cole is taking, but the left gap's just a little too open to have it be a par four, probably. 2021 resistance discs open. This hole is going to look different for sure. It's going to add some more treachery, and there's not going to be circle one putts for the bur- for the two on this hole. God, it'd be really next year. It'd be really sweet to find a way to get the lake involved on this hole. There's, I mean, you could open up the gap on the walkout to throw it over the pond, but then you know you're losing a hole. But the next, this is where Chandler's park job is. This is so good. He's looking at it too. He knew it was close, and you're showing. Yeah, come in for the instant replay, and what did he miss by a foot, maybe? Oh, if that, it was so close, like. I thought it was going in. I thought we were going to catch, you know, a little albatross ace to the course par on on camera. It was very close to being insanely cool. Uh, We're going to move on to a much more straightforward hit the gap hole. 307 feet. We got a pond on the whole right side of this. So if you throw a backhand and turn it over, you can find the water. If you chop a forehand off a little early, it can go in the water. Chandler stepping up uh, probably with a buzz yeah, he's going back to that channel buzz, and he's gave it a bit of a run there. That was right at it. Yeah, Cole's going to line up what I feel is a little more traditional play on this because you do have all the space out to the left, and that's the forehand, but does exactly what we talked about and really let it go early. That's going to find the water and give him probably a 35 to 40 footer for par from the drop zone. Yeah, it's about 35 feet. It's outside the circle for sure, but it's definitely a makeable putt to try to save your par. I apparently got scared after watching his and decided to do what Andrew did in the first round, and that's throw it into the bushes to make sure I don't have an opportunity to birdie. Jared going Raptor and going Thummer, which isn't a play that probably gets done too much on this hole, but he lands right next to the basket. Yeah, probably just Jared and Ryan Robinson throwing the Thummers on this one, but Jared's going to be stoked about that one. It should be just under the basket. Yep, And here is the par putt. For Cole, um, pretty friendly drop zone, honestly. Oh, and that was a great putt that just scoots out the back. Too much hyzer on the putter. Yeah, does this hit right side? It's hard to tell. We'll slow it down. Oh, yeah, yeah right. It's that part. right side slicing through. Oh, okay, I, I got in a better spot than I thought I did and throw it into the cage anyways. Didn't deserve a birdie on that one. Didn't get a birdie on that one, so all is probably correct with how that was played. Great thumber by Jared. Yeah. I remember in practice he just kept throwing different shots at this, and then he asked me how long it is. I said, it's just over 300 feet, and he's like, cool, that's about all my thumber goes. And he threw a thumber and put it right into the basket, and he said, I guess there's my tournament play. (laughs) That would have been me from five years ago, or honestly, me at Jared's age for sure. I would have definitely thrown a thumber on this hole. But as I've got older and my shoulder gets a little more worn down, I try to save those for when I have them instead of when I just want to have them. A variety there, a couple twos, a three, and a four. And we're starting to separate just a little bit again, 19, 17, 15, and 14. And now we've got three birdie holes coming up to end. You really want to get these next two, and then 18's a little trickier because it's short. But this is as much of a you have to birdie this hole as anything else out here. Yeah, you're really going to want to get 16. It's, you know, pretty wide open. You can throw the backhand. You can throw the forehand. I've seen people throw the roller on it, but it plays into a bit of a backstopped hill, so you're going to want to get the opportunity. I wish we had a catch cam for this one because Chandler throws the comet again, bounces off a tree that's right of. I don't know if he hit chains or not, but it was real close on the ricochet to going in. Yeah, I can't remember where he hits metal. It was definitely like cage to band somewhere in that range. You know, Chandler's been pretty close on a couple holes recently, drawn drawn the ace, but he's also quietly catching up just a little bit. He was only eleven down just a few holes ago. Yeah, I got the eagle last hole. Going to get a birdie here. You can see my so-so reaction on that. Good enough. Um, And then Cole going back to the Raptor. Raptor, Firebird, 
whatever. Any stable forehand disc is going to be good enough for this. I'm kind of surprised that Chandler doesn't throw forehand on it. I know it's not necessarily a specialty. It just seems like such an automatic forehand that I I feel like everyone would do it, but Chandler's so much better at that turnover shot than I am. Yeah, his mid-range turnover game is just so clean. He's yeah, just got good. a little bit to come back. Yep. Good make. You got to make that. He hit metal on his drive off of the tree, and it still skated out to that far away. And then I assume this is... Oh, it's this me. Is you here. Yeah. He's cleaning up from behind the tree. I was only about 15 feet away, and that's what you want. And I'm talking about where Chandler went through at, so... Uh, he's given a couple in a row a run right by the chains and it would be cool to see someone pick one up but not to be this time yeah you guys are out here putting some work in on the scorecards flirting with those hot round one scores yep we've eliminated the fact or likely eliminated the fact that anyone's going to catch a 12 under that Jared had in the first round, but seven, 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 and I'm at nine. So pretty good out of the lead card. Absolutely. We're coming up to hole 17, which is a little bit of an unorthodox hole. You've got to hit this double Mando gap, but you have to throw it over these trees where you can just see the basket through that tiny gap. So a lot of players are going to try to flex one to get it to move one way and then have some time to fade out. Or just throw a straight shot that helicopters down onto the basket. Yeah, Chandler a little high on his. Mine was honestly a little low, but thankfully I threw it through the four-foot gap when you throw it that low. So it's going to get a pretty legitimate birdie putt out of it. Chandler's going to be quite a bit short left, I would imagine. Colgo and Luna. and the That's danger turned. With, Yeah, the danger with throwing a putter here is if you do yank it over right, it might not come back. Yeah, we as, as we kind of saw in round one, there is thick rough behind the basket, so you can get yourself into a danger zone. It's probably a good thing that I was down there spotting slash doing catch cam, pretending at least to. Yeah, that was the best shot of the bunch. In my mind, what Jared just did there. Uh, Chandler, this is makeable, but it is outside the circle. Oh, that was close to going in and keeping his hot streak going. It'll scoot out to 15 feet or so. It took us a little bit to find Coles. Once we did, he decides to pitch in a forehand. I was standing right behind him, and there was no line there. That was a pretty incredible out. Yeah, that's a wild toss. I mean, just really throwing in a prayer, and let's see it again. Yeah, you're right. It was a complete toss in, just trying to get out of the stuff he's he's a big kid you know he's over six feet with long arms and it was taking everything he had just to reach out to that path to flick one and it happens to find the bottom of the basket so cool highlight for cole there yeah that's a sweet one and you can tell by his reaction it wasn't a make that was on purpose so to say it was one of those prayers throw it up and if it happens to go and it's almost like banking in a free throw yeah Wow, and the fact that you went long after poking through all that stuff. Yeah, I didn't hit anything on the tee. It got through completely clean, and because it was so low, it had all its momentum going forward. Like we said, Jared's drive was the best of the bunch. Somehow we snuck three birdies out of that, and then Chandler almost dumped his putt in. So now the card's stretching it out to 10 under, 8 under, 8 under, and Chandler still at 7, but starting to put things together. We got one hole left at this point. We kind of know that seeing, you know, whatever happens on hole 18 happens, but we're likely to be playing in a very similar card tomorrow as well. Yeah, there, I mean, we did see eight unders on the entire chase card to start the round, and then even eight unders going into the third card. So people were tight between you, Chandler, and Cole starting the round, but we'll have to see if everyone else kept up that pace, if anyone bounced back. But you guys just want to finish this round strong. Yep. Uh, hole 18, 200 feet. I'm going to take this wide right gap. I took it in the first round, then had a putt go through. You got to make sure the left foot's off the ground because it's off the tee pad, but the right foot's inside of it. Uh, using all your angles, that one sneak, or sneaks up there and has a putt. Is Cole going straight? I think he's going to flex it with the zone. I'm I... asking for it to come back. and yeah, I don't know why. I 
maybe it's just the way I throw. I don't like this line at all, and I don't think it worked when people tried it today. It's there, though, and you can see the basket through it, and I think that's what makes it really tough to not take that gap, but a little bit of a sucker gap in my mind. Yeah, it's definitely tough. Um, I somehow, during you know, make inventing this hole and practicing it and playing it, I aced it on my first go-through going down the left side, which... You know, kind of a fluke, it felt like. But, you know, it's designed to be there and give you an option if you want it. The thing I worried about with the left gap is exactly what some of these guys are getting into. And that's if you don't hit that gap. This is not a normal disc golf hole. Nothing had been done other than James carving out a path and doing a ton of work in what the fairway is. But if you got off the fairway, this isn't where discs are being thrown at. No one's trampled any of this stuff down. It's... You know, it's really, really thick off of this little 10 or 12 foot path. Yeah, Jared threw maybe just a little bit too high on his approach. He clipped something, kicked him to pretty far. And, you know, as Jared's confident putting goes, he sent himself deep, too. He's going to have work to do to pick to clean up the bogey. Yeah, Chandler, good putt, good birdie going up the straight gap. He did get clean. Jared's still probably edge of the circle here to save his four. And that's not really a video edit. That's literally how Jared putts. He steps up immediately and throws it in on hole 18, you know, to finish around. And now I've got a putt to actually take the lead from Jared going into the final day. Cole pokes in the birdie here. And you've got that similar spot where spit through on round one is it going through your mind at all uh i'm sure it is or maybe going through my mind is the fact that this basket owes me one so just toss it in there's no way it's spitting me out two rounds in a row there we go definitely got that one on the pole this time that one was dead on the pole it had enough wobbles sometimes i think the wobble helps keep it in but it got the good wobble, it was at the right spot, and I'm still talking about how it went out last round. Ending it off with some good scores on 18 for most of the card, picking up the birdies. We've got a new leader of the tournament. Yeah, hadn't led yet. I tied it up early in this round, but a good finish there to get to 11 under for the round. Cole shoots nine, Chandler eight, Jared seven with that final bogey, but we go into the third and final round which will be at dexter state park uh, probably about 45 minutes from here honestly yeah it's at least a little bit of a drive yeah and is another wooded course which is kind of uh staying with the theme of this but you can see that james moore will actually be joining us with the 10 down and then ty love uh from the bend redmond area shoots 13 to reset that record but Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you in round three. Hey guys, Colin here with CH Sports. I just wanted to give a huge shout out to my coverage sponsors. These videos would not be able to come to life without these people's help, so I really appreciate it. There's plans starting as low as $3 a month, and every single dollar helps grow the channel. If you would like to see your name or business listed in the credits of every single one of my videos, please head over to patreon.com slash chsports.